Today we are changing the oil on this old Ford 3000 tractor. These things will actually, these tractors hold eight quarts of oil. So you need to make sure when you do this that you have a good size oil pan, one that'll hold basically uh, two gallons of oil. There doesn't appear to be two gallons of oil coming out of this thing. That does not surprise me because it's an old tractor. It's probably been burning oil. Uh, one of the things that I realized in researching this, and I wish I had done a little more homework and work on these our equipment well, earlier on when we got started, is I've been putting 10W30 in the tractor. It's a good idea with these older tractors, especially to use 15W40, and if you can, use a 15W40 diesel oil because it's it's just better on the older engines. It's had 10W30 in there. We're in North Carolina, so you know I I don't think that I've really done any more damage to the engine than its old age has done to itself. Basically, uh, to get started, you need to remove your drain plug to your oil pan. And when you're down there, go ahead and inspect it. I noticed that our uh, oil pan seal is leaking all the way around. Uh, one of my goals next winter will be to replace a lot of the seals in the engine. It would have been nice to have had this seal on hand today for this oil change because it's not hard to remove this oil pan from the tractor and that would have just made things a little easier. I could have gone ahead and changed that seal while I'm in here. Because this oil is so black, what I'm probably going to do I've got some old 10W30 that I never used for the tractor. I will probably go ahead and dump some of that in there just to help clean it out a little bit. It's pretty nasty in there. At least it'll help rinse some junk off the bottom of the oil pan. The other thing that I like to do when I change oil is I like to relieve any pressure that could be holding the oil in the engine. I want free airflow coming all the way out. So things like pulling your dipstick, removing your oil filler cap while you're draining the oil will kind of help the oil run a little more smoothly out of there. We're also going to change today our oil filter, which is right here. And we're gonna replace it. We've got a new Fram oil filter for it that we're gonna go ahead and put in here. So let's get started. So to give the engine that extra little flush, I'm going to use some of this old oil. I'm going to go ahead and put the plug back in momentarily. And then add a couple quarts and then remove the plug again so that these quarts have a chance to really kind of fill up in there a little bit and help collect any residue that might be in there. Now I'm sure that there are people who are going to comment and say that this is waste of oil and it doesn't work, but it's just something that I've done past working on boats and I, th I think it works. I mean, it helps remove just a little bit of an extra gunk before I put in fresh oil. Definitely still some nasty stuff coming out of there. So, it's been a while. So to remove the uh, oil filter, we have to, there's a nut here on the outside that we'll remove. And when you buy the new filters, they generally come with a new gasket. So don't worry about that. Oh, good Lord. That's fun. That oil is just pouring out of this filter. Oh. Inside of here, we've got and there's something I didn't see 
that kind of just fell out there is uh, this spring. I didn't see that fall out. I didn't know that there was a spring in there. Be aware, there's a spring in here that helps hold that filter in place. That is one nasty looking. You can tell that this hasn't been done in a long time. Yeah, how nasty it is in there. Now there is a drain plug on here. I'm sure if you open that up and drained this before undoing it, you could have. Uh, I could have saved myself this mess right here. This gasket in here has been leaking anyway. So I've already had a lot of oil kind of spilling down the side of this thing. I know that's not a good excuse, but this is my first time doing this. I didn't realize that it had a little drain right there. I did not pay attention to which way the old filter came out. Pretty sure this goes on this way. We got our spring, which then sits up in there. Before I put that in, I want to see what kind of seals I have in here because we've got a lot of seals. Looks like one of the gaskets would replace this one here, so I need to go ahead and get this off. Oh yeah. So you've got multiple seals in here. I'm gonna show you. And when you buy these oil filter kits, you're gonna get a seal for each. So this, this is the inside seal, this uh, thicker rubber one. And then if I can get this out, Kind of have an exterior paper gasket. We'll go ahead and we'll slide the new exterior gasket on there. Stick that in. Take our new rubber gasket, put it down here. So we've got our new rubber seal for this exterior here. I'm gonna clean that out with my finger first and also just kind of wet it. Now will put that gasket in place. tighten it down just kind of check around and make sure that, that that gasket in there is staying flat and in place. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to reinstall my plug here. The oil plug at this point probably needs a new gasket as well, but don't have one. So if you've, I've already removed my battery. The, where you fill the oil on these is actually be, tucked behind the battery got an oil filler cap which I went ahead and removed that as well because I went ahead and, and poured some fresh oil through it to just try and help clean some of the gunk out. Um, because we're putting fresh oil in the engine we want to make sure that we're not adding more gunk to it. If you're using a funnel 
A lot of times these funnels, when they're sitting in storage, because they've had oil in them, they collect a lot of junk, dirt, nastiness inside here. You really don't want that in your engine. So you really should make sure that you clean these out thoroughly before you use them. I mean, it's almost impossible to avoid having dirt and dust build up in these when you're not using them and they're in a shop or a workplace. So I'm getting this cleaned out. Get that in there as deep as I can. It's looking pretty good. So while pouring the oil in, I'm not gonna pour all two gallons in right away. <clears throat> I'll probably pour in about a gallon here. Oh. Kinda have to let the oil Fill the funnel up and then make its way down into the motor. Here we go. Check my dipstick. Now this is saying that it's over full, but I haven't put in all eight quarts of oil yet. So I haven't put in all eight quarts of oil, but the oil filter up here probably holds several of those quarts in and of itself, at least a quart, if not a quart and a half. What I'm probably gonna have to do is start the motor, pump some oil into the, um, the oil filter, and then uh, that'll also give me a chance to check my seals. I've kind of been here wiping all of this off so that I can see if anything is leaking. After we test that and, and pump some oil into here, we can come back and add the remaining oil to the engine and make sure that it's nice and full with uh, fresh, clean oil. So I fired it up and um, it did take about a quart of oil to fill the oil filter. Now I can go ahead and top off my oil. I had to jump start it because my battery is dead. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove the battery so that I can uh, take the battery over to our charger, which we keep underneath the house. And uh, we'll go ahead and top off the oil. And the engine oil should be good to go for a little while. I checked down the side where the oil filter is. I didn't see any leaks, so that's good. Dump the rest of this in there. Two gallons of oil is a lot of oil. These tractors hold about four and a half gallons, or a little over 13, about 13 and a half quarts of um, hydraulic oil. And we'll be doing a video on that shortly too. We have to replace the PTO seal on the back of the tractor. So when I go back there and replace the PTO seal, I'm gonna go ahead and just change out the, uh, the hydraulic fluid in it as well. I'm gonna check my dipstick now that I have topped off the oil and it says it's full. So uh, definitely took all two gallons of uh, 15W40 to fill this thing up. Go ahead and clean off some of this junk that's built up in here so I can make sure that I have a good vis visual on whether or not anything's leaking. I'm going to take my old gaskets with my old filter and put it back in this filter box. The filter's going to drip a little bit, so I've got a plastic bag here to put into. 
So that's already ready to go. Look at that. That is some really nasty oil. If your tractor's like mine, there's probably less oil in it than in the new container you just bought. So it's pretty easy to just go ahead and put your old oil back in the container from your new oil. You can take this to your nearest recycling center. A lot of them have a place to uh, dispose of old motor oil. The oil that I used here we got from Wally World. Um, this is a Walmart oil called Supertech. Uh, from what I've read on the My Tractor forums, Supertech is basically made by Shell. So uh, it's just a Walmart brand that Walmart is selling super cheap. It's really not a bad oil or weight oil to even put in to your farm truck. Um, I'm not going to use this in our Tahoe or Jeep, but for um, some of the things that we do around here uh, and, and a lot of our heavy equipment, I'll probably be using the, the 15W40. And again, SuperTech is really just a shell oil. It's um, Wally World's got a, a great price on it, of course. They're, they're putting all the small guys out of business because of their pricing anyway. I don't like going to Wally World, but we went to Wally World for this and you know, like I said, the 15W40 uh, gets something that is rated for diesel. Even though you've got a gas engine, it's actually going to help you if you've got an older motor to put in the 15W40 C-rated uh, oil. So it's got some extra detergents in there that are made to uh, help the oil consume all the carbons that come out of a diesel engine. And you, when you have these older tractors with these older engines, they're going to have similar needs. So it's actually, it'll help the longevity and the life of the engine if you start using uh, the C-rated oil 